मॉर्निंग तो द लास्ट टू मॉड्यूल्स वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट रॉ मटेरियल प्रिपरेशन फॉर द ग्लास फर्नेस आयरन मेकिंग प्रोसेस and also uh, we have discussed about uh, what are the various uh, testings which we need to do uh, for the raw materials before we charge it into the blast furnace so today in this particular module in the third module so here we are going to discuss about the the blast furnace design and construction features as well as the uh, the various uh, chemical reactions which takes place inside the blast furnace so we have already prepared our raw material now we, we have prepared the coke from the metallurgical poles we have prepared the agglomerates this interesting pellets and we have also seen uh, preparation of uh, structures now once they all the raw material are back we have to do the testings we have to do some certain testings room temperature as well as high temperature testings we need to do these raw materials to check its feasibility to sustain in the blast furnace environment so that also we have discussed what are the various testings uh, we have to do for uh, oak what are the various testings we need to do for uh, sinters and pellets so these all we have already discussed now once the raw material are qualified to be charged in the blast furnace we will discuss about the construction features of the furnace which we are going to use to produce the raw material <clears throat> so this is called as a blast furnace the name it is mentioned blast furnace because we are providing a certain amount of uh, preheated air with that amount of velocity we are injecting into the furnace from the bottom that is called as a blast and furnace any furnace which we basically use to either uh, to heat it or to melt it we use it. so that is how the name it came it is called a blast furnace because uh, Uh, we are uh, using preheated air, uh, and we are purging that with certain velocity for the combustion process to take place inside the furnace, followed by the uh, smelting takes place inside the blast furnace. Now, parts of the blast furnace, if you see, you have two different pictures are there. so this picture will give a schematic view of the entire setup in one way other than the accessories uh, you can see there is a charging system there is a skip pricing system is there of course this is the uh, old construction of uh, the blast furnace uh, where you if you have a bell type of uh, charging system is that nowadays uh, we have uh, bellless top charging systems are arranged uh, for all the blast furnaces apart from uh, charging system we have uptakes these uptakes are for the passage of the off gases from the blast furnace and you have a uh, the rest part of the blast furnace where starting with the throat 
then um, stack part, then you have a belly box region, and you have a heart part of the blast furnace, and uh, you have a pierce, then you have a tap hole. Okay. So these are the some of the parts of the blast furnace. And uh, in this picture, you can see, you can also visualize some internal uh, domes or internal structure of the blast furnace. In here also, uh, in here in a much more clear way, you can see this part is called the fourth part, uh, where you mentioned, and uh, then followed by the stack, uh, that is the um, largest uh, part of the uh, blast furnace. Then you have a belly region, then you have a Bosch, then you have a clear part, and then you have a hot part of the blast furnace. And um, here again, uh, within the blast furnace itself, we have divided the entire height into different zones, where uh, uh, the, the upper part we call it as a lumpy zone, where the entire uh, uh, burden, whatever we have charged, but that will be in the solid form. And you have a uh, uh, Another zone that is called a fusive zone, um, where uh, the, uh, the conversion of solid to liquid basically takes place. Uh, and uh, they, we also call this as the uh, low, lowest permeability zone inside the blast furnace. And then um, below the positive zone, you have a, a dipping zone where uh, um, the liquid product, whatever are formed uh, in the corrosive zone, um, uh, that will basically trickle down um, to the bed of the solid. Uh, that is called as a dripping zone. Mm -hmm. And then finally, this product comes and settles down in the uh, half part of the furnace. Yeah. <clears throat> This is the, uh, the entire overview of the blast furnace along with its accessories. This is the charging system you have. This is the actual furnace. And uh, as I told, these are the uptakes where the off gases uh, come out from the blast furnace along with a certain amount of uh, dust. And uh, this is called as a downcomer. And uh, this downcomer is basically connected to the gas cleaning systems. So there are, in this picture, you can see three uh, different uh, gas cleaning systems are there. Uh, one is the dust catcher, then followed by the scrubber, then you have electrostatic precipitator. So these are the uh, three gas cleaning systems, followed by um, where, where actually uh, whatever the uh, dust um, combined with the off gases that will be sub segregated in these um, gas cleaning systems, and um, the off gas this is having a very high calorific value uh, that will be sent into the blast furnace house uh, where. Uh, um, the off gases will ignite the will get ignite will get combusted uh, inside the stove and the heat whatever it is generated that will be uh, passed on to the uh, sector bricks in the refractory line system and uh, and from the ambient atmosphere uh, the, the air is suction and it is allowed to pass through this uh, heated checker bricks. Um, in that way, the heat transfer will take place. Uh, at the initial stages, um, the heat transfer will take place from the gas um, to the checker bricks, and the checker bricks will get heated up by absorbing the, um, the good, quant good quantity of heat carrying by the off gases. And, um, and once the, um, the ambient atmosphere 
when it is uh, allowed to pass through this heated checker bricks again, uh, there is a heat transfer takes place from the checker bricks to the ambient air, and uh, that heated air is allowed to pass uh, through the um, basal pipe, and it is it, it and that heated air is entered or purged into the uh, blast furnace uh, through the years for the combustion process to take place uh, at the raceway. <clears throat> so this is the, uh, the entire uh, view of uh, blast furnace and its uh, uh, accessories. Now uh, we will uh, step by step. We will discuss about uh, various. Um, Parts of the blast furnace and the significance of its uh, design. So the first one, as I shown, uh, the first, the top part of the blast furnace that is called as a probe. So that is a um, the vertical parallel uh, line. You can see that is called as a throat part of the blast furnace, which is a cylindrical system uh, approximately having a height of uh, 2.5 to 3 meters where uh, the burden actually allowed to enter into the blast furnace from this particular area. Followed by uh, after throat uh, you have a stack part we call it as a stack or shaft anything is okay. Is a stack part of the blast furnace. This is the part, or this is the zone which occupies the maximum height of the uh, blast furnace. <clears throat> so the shaft is the highest part of the profile, and uh, the shaft angle, uh, which is of around 82 to 80, 86 degrees, in which uh, the button is completely solid state in the stack part. And um, Starch basically get heated up uh, from a temperature of around uh, 200 degrees centigrade to a temperature of around uh, 1000 to 1100 degrees centigrade. So because the off gases, whatever are coming out from this blast furnace, it will be having a temperature of around 200 to 250 degrees centigrade. So when you are charging the button into the blast furnace, uh, certainly uh, the initial uh, Temperature which is exposed uh, by the burden will be of around the uh, around approximately 200 to 50. And once the burden is allowed to move um, down across the height of the furnace, and once it reaches to the bottommost part of the stack, then here the temperature will be approximately 1000 to 1100 degrees. And uh, if you see the uh, the design of the stack part of the blast furnace, it is an inverted uh, cone extended outward. This inverted cone extended outward. The reason for this uh, kind of uh, design is uh, in order to ensure a free fall of charge material. As the charge gets expands progressively to the carbon deposition. Uh, during uh, there is a rise in the temperature inside the furnace. So the cross section of the furnace is uniformly increased to at most double the size from the line to accommodate the, the burden which is uh, under uh, swelling condition. So most of the solid state reduction reactions actually takes place uh, inside the stack part of the blast furnace. So during the movement or during the motion of the iron bearing material inside the blast furnace, so it gets uh, expands, swells, and uh, because of which uh, we should uh, to have a proper um, movement of the burden without any disturbance. So we should give a proper space for the 
uniform movement of the burden. That's why uh, the uh, shaft part uh, is extended outward. And then you have uh, the belly region. So you can clearly see this is the belly region. Again, uh, parallel lines uh, vertically extended up. So the belly is a relatively short and its uh, function is to make a smooth transition from a widening shaft to a tap and wash. This portion represents the uh, greatest diameter inside the blast furnace. So this uh, belly part basically uh, that is to join uh, uh, the shaft part as well as the wash part. So we have given a, um, a vertical parallel line that is connected with the, the belly part and uh, among the all the parts of the blast furnace this part is having the highest diameter and uh, the belly post region okay so this is the region or it can say is the root for the um, formation of the cosive zone inside the blast furnace the bottommost part of the belly or you can say the top part of the body. And then the wash part, the blast furnace. Uh, this is a very important part of the blast furnace. It supports the, as I told you, it supports the root of the positive soil. And the height of the wash is uh, about 3.7 to 3.7 meter approximately with an angle of 74 to 82 degrees and degrees. And the charged material, except coke, begins to soften and fuse as they come down into the bottom of the stack. Uh, and uh, the gang of the iron ore and ash of coke and flux combines to form the slag. And the furnace walls in this region tapered down to reduce the cross sectional area by about 25%. To decrease uh, the volume of the charge. The burden permeability in this region is mainly maintained by the presence of solid coke. So, therefore, this indicates that coke should have adequate strength and proper size for efficient operation. So, you can see in this particular uh, picture uh, the Bosch part where uh, Whatever the burden, it undergoes softening and melting because uh, the cohesive zone, the top part and the bottom part. This, this top part shows the indicates the start of the cohesive zone. That is the start of the uh, softening, and uh, the bottommost layer. That is the end of the cosmic zone represents the melting of the burden. So whatever the material which which drops down from the cosmic zone that will be in the liquid form. And uh, once the material once the burden is in solid form, its volume is very high. But once it turn converts into liquid form, its volume gets reduced. So that's why it is. Uh, uh, we don't require much uh, space at this uh, area. So that's why it is uh, uh, projected inward um, so that to compensate the, the volume of the product, whatever it is obtained. And uh, Also, here we have uh, in this zone we have a uh, book which is not um, exposed to the combustion process. So, then uh, the book is the only one which is in the solid condition at this particular region. So, whatever the liquid products that is the slag as well as the 
the the hot metal whatever it is formed that will get trickled down through the uh, bed of uh, solids uh, that is the coke bed of solids and then finally gets sent down to the hard part of the blast furnace and then you have uh, tears here you can see this is the tear this is the one tear like this um, uh, here also you can see there is another uh, tear is there so like this sir uh, around the periphery of the blast furnace because this is a cylindrical uh, cross section so along its periphery you have a significant number of uh, tears are arranged and the number of tears are arranged to any blast furnace is purely depends upon its uh, complete uh, dimensions so tears and combustion zone are located uh, below the wash and above the hearth zone so that you can clearly witness in this particular picture so this is the hearth part of the blast furnace and uh, this is the wash part so in between uh, wash as well as hearth your uh, tears are uh, arranged by the time the charge descends into the area near the tears except except the central column of oak that is, as I said, it is the dead man zone where the, uh, the coke is in the solid state, which doesn't expose to the combustion process. So that central column will be in the solid form. So the oxygen of the blast, which, which is which you are injecting through the tears, that will come in contact with the carbon which is present in the coke and the combustion process takes place and generating the reducing gases, CO and uh, CO2 in front of the tears. And uh, this um, combustion of the coke basically takes place in a region that is called as a airway, which is located in front of the tears. So in this picture, you can see this, this, this part is called as a race. This part is called a race. So the tears, whatever are fixed into the blast furnace, when you inject the preheated air at certain velocity, this preheated air will push the coke, which is located in front of the tears and it tries to make some empty space and within this empty space this is that empty space nothing but the tear uh, sorry raceway so within this raceway the oak particles will get swills will keep on rotating here and undergo the combustion and within the raceway itself the CO CO2 Formation basically takes place. And, and by this way, whatever the reducing gases which are formed, as uh, CO2 is uh, not uh, stable at high temperatures, so it readily reacts with uh, again carbon and forms uh, carbon monoxide, and uh, uh, that is the gas which travels. And interact with the, the solid which is present at the top of the blast furnace, especially in the stack part. And then you have a uh, hearth and the tap hole, that is uh, the lowest part of the blast furnace. <clears throat> the hearth part, hearth is uh, nothing but the sink for the liquid products, uh, where uh, after uh, Smelting, what are the products which are formed? Those all will get settled down in the hard part of the blast process. And uh, you have a tap hole there where you tap these liquid products at the subsequent intervals.
So although the most of the food burns at the tubular level, a small fraction descends even into the heart. So form the dead man zone, uh, which is uh, undissolved uh, solid coke particles. So in this way, whatever the carbon, whatever the coke which is uh, submerged uh, or sometimes it may float also in the surface of the liquid water. So this um, coke, the carbon which is present in that coke uh, will usually get diffused uh, into the liquid product. In that way, uh, we can see a certain amount of carbon get dissolved uh, in the liquid. Hot metal. So whatever the uh, the liquid products which are formed uh, during the spiking process, uh, based upon its uh, density, so they got float onto the surface of uh, each other. So slag is having a low density compared to that of the hot metal. So always uh, slag floats on the surface of the hot metal, and uh, these two products are tapped at regular intervals of time to the tap hole. So there is a uh, provision for uh, uh, the tapping of the uh, liquid products from the blast furnace and by, by drilling the tap hole so the liquid products can be removed out from the blast furnace. And uh, uh, once the liquid product comes out of the blast furnace, and these products again get segregated in the um, run-up zone of the uh, blast furnace, uh, so that uh, we can collect these two products separately uh, in the cast house. So if you see the cross section of the dimensions of the furnace at the bottommost part, that is the part. So it is uh, degrees since uh, the liquids are dense, we call force and void. So those leading to decrease in the volume. That's why uh, finally the cross section area of the earth part is getting reduced. That you can see here. The height of the heart is uh, approximately 3.2 3.9 meter from the wash to the bottom. And the tap holes are located at uh, one third of the heart height upwards from the bottom. And the number of tap holes depends on, as I said, it is depends upon the furnace productivity. So one tap hole is uh, good uh, if you have uh, production rate of 4,000 tons per day. And uh, if it is anything more than that, then they will should increase the number of tap holes. So, like, if you have a production capacity of uh, 12,000 to 16,000 tons per day, then you should have uh, at least four tap holes. <clears throat> so, uh, to, to collect the liquid products from the from the blast furnace, we help of a mountain we basically uh, tap, drill the tap hole uh, approximately around 70 mm diameter with an inclination of 10 degree. And uh, the tap hole length it should be for bigger furnaces, it should be of uh, 0.45 times of arc radius. So this is, this is the, uh, the value which we need to take into consideration up to what depth we need to uh, drill the tap hole. The area in between tap hole and the hearth bottom is called as uh, bog depth. 
and uh, the walk depth of the furnace should be about 18 to 20 percent of the hard work. So that is the, the the distance between the tap hole and the hard. So if this is the tap hole. So this this distance is called as walk depth. We will see some of the uh, terms which we basically, uh, the terminologies which we basically use uh, in the blast furnace uh, region as far as the uh, dimensions of the blast furnace is concerned and its parts. So first one is the stock line. <laughs> stock line means the horizontal line located. Here I have mentioned. Uh, the definitions for stock line with respect to both the uh, um, wellless charging system and the uh, belt type of charging system. So if you have a um, belt type of charging system, then uh, the stock line means it is uh, the line is located six feet below the large bend when it is closed. So this is nothing but a stock line. That means that in this area, you can do the charging. Beyond this, uh, we cannot uh, do the so that, that is nothing but the stop line. So this is the stop line, which is this is the approximately around uh, six feet from the the bottom most part of the large bed. And here you can see uh, this picture. Uh, this is nothing but the wellless top charging system where uh, you have a rotating chute. The same thing which you can see it here. So this rotating chute is nothing but this one. So this will rotate. This this will rotate and during the you can see in this condition this will rotate during the charging process. And for uh, less top charging system, the stock line is nothing but uh, it is a horizontal line located three feet below the tip of the rotating chute. From here onwards, below this three feet distance we need to maintain. That is nothing but the stop line. Means till that height, we can do the charge. And then the zero stop line, uh, that is the, the horizontal plane formed by bottom of the big bell, then closed or tip of the rotating. So that is nothing but the zero stop line. Means there is no there is no burden at that particular location. And then working height and working volume of the furnace. It is the vertical distance between the center line of the clear and the stock line. So, center line of the clear this is the working height and working height. This is the clear part. So, the center line of the clear to that of the stock line. So that is nothing but the working height. And the working volume is also the same. It is the, the total inner volume from the center line of the sphere to the stop line. Similarly, useful height and useful volume. So it is the distance from the Stop line, the tap hole. That is nothing but the useful height. Stop line, the tap hole. We have a tap hole here. So this is the, it is nothing but from the tap hole to the stop line. So this is nothing but the Useful height or useful volume. Then you have a total height of the furnace. That means uh, it is the distance from the tap hole and the large bell cooper. Uh, 
or you can say the charging platform, you can see that is the total height. So this is the total height from the tap pool to the charging platform. So these are the some of the terms, technical terms which uh, usually we use in the industry when you pointing out the dimensions of the furnace and its uh, height of the furnace and all. Okay, I'll stop it here. Uh, in the next class, we will discuss about uh, what are the various kinds of refractory tricks which we use at different parts of the plastic.